What's up guys, the February Patreon rewards are now available. Terminate, Elspeth's Sun's Champion, and the Ur Dragon are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash itresolves, or by clicking the link in the description below. What's going on guys? Welcome to another Let's Open video. Today we are opening up a pack of Time Spiral. Absolutely an awesome set. So this was part of the like uh, Planar Chaos era, things like that where crazy things were happening. We were dealing with cards that you could play very, very early in the game but didn't do anything until late in the game. We were dealing with things that switch color identity, all kinds of crazy stuff. Lots of really good value in this set as well. Uh, lots of fun mechanics that hopefully we'll get to talk about. Uh, we are going to go through this, as we always do, uh, with uh, the intent of figuring out what our first round draft pick will be. Uh, I didn't draft during this time. I did collect, so I do know some of the cards, but feel free, please help me out in the comment section. If you guys drafted during this time, let me know if I make just a completely incorrect pick. I would be happy to talk about that uh, and hopefully figure out a little bit more information about the set for not just me, but everybody else. So thank you guys in advance for doing that. <coughs> Sorry about that. We'll go through every card here. Our first card here uh, is a great example of one of the cool mechanics in this set. Uh, Keldon Halbertier. That's not correct. I don't know what it is. It's a 4-1 for 4 in a red. It has first strike and it has suspend 4. Uh, you can pay that for 1 red. So rather than play this card from your hand for its regular cost, you can pay 1 red and remove it from the game with 4 time counters on it. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, every upkeep, remove a time counter from it, and when you remove the last one, you play it without paying its mana cost, and then it has haste, so you can use it that turn as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Something in my throat there. Uh, fantastic uh, mechanic. Lots of really, really cool things have this mechanic in this set. It's a really great way to get some late game value set up uh, for, for in, in the early turns of the game is what I should say. So uh, that being said, I think this card is okay, not amazing. Uh, it is a 4-1 with first strike, though. I like that. Uh, the fact that it's five mana minusing the suspend thing, uh, I think a little expensive. Uh, the fact that it does have suspend makes it much more playable because it will come down. Uh, theoretically, if you can play it on turn one, it'll come down pretty early. Uh, and you can hopefully start dealing some damage with it pretty quickly. Uh, that first strike just means it's going to deal with combat really, really well as well. So lots of upside to it, but I don't necessarily think it's like a crazy amazing card. It's a little bit late game for a, uh, a red deck, like a very aggressive deck. Uh, and so it's it's in a weird spot where it doesn't necessarily fit perfectly into that style of deck, but it is just a powerful, okay, kind of mid to late game card. Uh, this is a pretty good one, though. Ivory Giant uh, is a 3-4 for 5 and 2 white. Uh, when it comes into play, tap all non-white creatures. Uh, and then this also has suspend for 5 for only 1 white. So... What's really great about this is uh, if you are in just like a really heavy white deck, this is essentially like a free turn for you to just like swing in for a ton of damage. Uh, that's not always the case. Obviously, if they're playing white too, it's a little bit tougher. Uh, but Giants have a little bit of synergy in this set, I would say. And that suspend just means it's going to be able to come down early if you can get it done on turn one or two. So, excuse me, lots of upside to something like this. I definitely like it. I don't know if it's better. Uh, I think it is. Uh, it does a little bit more for your full board, uh, whereas this is obviously just a little bit better on its own. Uh, so I'm going to keep this here for now. <clears throat> uh, grape Shot. Uh, one and a red for a sorcery. Uh, grape Shot deals one damage to target creature or player, and this features the well-loved mechanic uh, Storm. Uh, whenever you play this spell, copy it for every spell you played before it this turn. You can choose new copies for the tar uh, for new targets for every copy. Excuse me. Um, this is a really interesting card. So if you're if you're a modern uh, you know combo player or something like that, you probably or just a modern player, I'm sure you know about this card. It is generally the finisher, uh, the main deck finisher, and like the blue red kind of storm decks, which we do see in modern, uh, or at least we used to. Um, it's a very powerful card if you can make it work. The great thing about it is, in Limited, it doesn't actually have to win you the game to be good. You can just deal some damage to a creature, hopefully kill it. 
uh, or you can just steal the last few points to your opponent and hopefully kill them. So there is a lot of upside to a card like this. It does count as a removal spell, though you do have to like storm off a little bit at least to make it good. I don't think it's necessarily the pick here, uh, solely because you do have to have it in tandem with a lot of other cheap cards to make it good. Uh, I think Ivory Giant's a little bit better. It's more, it's a creature first off, which limited, you tend to side with the creatures, uh, but it also is a very game ending kind of creature, whereas this is just kind of a decent removal spell. It might end the game, but that's not necessarily the goal in limited. Uh, Mind Stab uh, is a sorcery. Interesting art. Five and a black. Target player discards three cards, and it also has to spend four for one black. Uh, I don't love this card very much. I definitely think if you're not suspending it, it's not good. Uh, at turn six, making somebody discard three cards, they probably only have one or two cards left. Uh, and so you're not getting max value for it. If you can suspend it, you might be. Uh, but generally, especially with all the suspend mechanic in this uh, mechanics in this set, a lot of people are going to be suspending stuff right and left and then not have many cards in their hand by that time. So I don't super love this card. Definitely don't think it's the pick here. Uh, Slipstream Serpent is a 6-6 for 7 and a blue. Uh, it can't attack unless the defending player controls an island. When you control no islands, you have to sacrifice it, but you can morph it. Uh, for 3 of any color, you can play it face down as a 2-2, uh, and then you can flip it face up for 5 and a blue. Uh, morph was a really interesting mechanic. It allowed you to do a lot of things a little bit early, and then usually you could, um, you know, flip the card, get some kind of effect. In this case, it doesn't have one on the flip, uh, but you can definitely get it out a little bit early. It has a more relevance in the early game and the late game, which is kind of nice. Uh, that flexibility is always something you're looking for, very similar to cycling and things like that. So uh, a lot of upside to this, but uh, I don't love it. It's a very expensive card uh, unless you're morphing it. Uh, and then obviously if you're against a, a deck with no islands, like, well, you're kind of out of luck. So I don't love this card. I don't think it's the pick here for sure. Uh, Nantuko Shaman is a 3-2 for two and a green. When it comes into play, if you control no tapped lands, you draw a card. Uh, and then you can suspend for one for two and two green. Um, interesting so obviously if you're if you're not suspending this you're not getting max value off of it uh but that does mean you're playing it later uh the fact that it draws you a card is very nice i think this is just a decent mid-game play in a green deck i don't think it's better than ivory giant to be honest i think i would much rather have the giant uh but this is definitely an okay card if you're in green i think this is a solid pick uh, Aether Flame Wall uh, is a 0-4 for 1 and a red. It does have Defender, as all walls do. Uh, and it can block creatures with Shadow as though they did not have Shadow. So Shadow is a really interesting kind of keyword thing where it just makes it very, very difficult to block the creature. I don't remember if it's colors that artifact creatures and creatures that share a color with it, I, I want to say. Uh, hopefully we'll figure it out as we go through. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, though. Uh, but it does have fire breathing, which is kind of nice. So it gets plus one plus zero until the end of the turn if you pay a red. And you can do that, obviously, as many times as you want. Uh, this is a really interesting wall because it can actually deal with creatures uh, without just endlessly having to block them. Uh, there's a little bit more plus side to it than that. I still don't think it's better than Ivory Giant, but I do like the fact that it can actually kill something, which is, you know, more than most walls can say. Uh, Detainment Spell is an enchant creature for one white. Uh, enchanted creatures' activated abilities can't be played and pay one in a white. Attach Detention Spell to target creature. Uh, interesting for sure. I don't think it's that good and limited, but I do think it's quite good. Uh, or you could you could kind of make an argument for it elsewhere. Uh, maybe sideboard tech. If you know your opponent has something that has a lot of activated activated abilities, it might be okay there. Uh, but you could be up against a deck that just doesn't have much of that. Uh, obviously, this is a very mechanic heavy set, so that's probably unlikely. But uh, I. I don't think this is a great card. It doesn't remove the creature from combat. It doesn't keep it from attacking or blocking like pacifism would. I think that's a little bit more important than the activated abilities usually. Uh, at, at the very least, it's much more useful. So I think I, I would pass on this. Uh, Thalid Shell Dweller uh, is a 0-5 for 1 and a green. It has Defender. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a Spore Counter on it, and then remove three Spore Counters from it and put a 1-1 green Sapperling Creature Token into play. 
Uh, this was a very heavy green-black mechanic where you could put counters on things at the beginning of your upkeep, and then uh, after a while you can start spitting out tokens. Uh, really, really powerful deck for sure if you can get some of the key pieces. This is obviously just kind of a backbone piece, but it is an important one. I don't think it's the reason to be in the deck, uh, especially at common. You hope to pick up a couple of these pretty easily if you find yourself there. But I do think it's a strong card for that deck, so I think if we find something later in the pack that pushes us there, this is definitely the card that we would hope to wheel. Uh, Bewilder is an instant for two and a blue. Target creature gets minus three, minus zero until the end of the turn, and then you draw a card. Uh, interesting that like the last episode, I think, in the 2014 core set, we saw uh, it was some card that gave it was a blue enchantment that did the exact same thing, uh, except it didn't draw the card, obviously. Uh, very blue way of dealing with stuff. It just kind of neuters the creature. It doesn't like kill it or anything like that. Uh, the fact that this draws a card makes it a lot more playable. If it didn't, I would say this is terrible. Uh, I don't necessarily think it's good anyway, uh, to be honest. I'd rather deal with the creature on a more permanent basis. But it, it can be a tempo swing for sure, and you can certainly combine this with some form of blocking that might be able to kill off the creature, which is nice. Uh, I definitely don't think it's better than the giant, though. Without a doubt, it's, def it's, it's absolutely not. Ooh. Fury Sliver uh, is our first uncommon. It's a 3-3 three, three for 5 and a red. All slivers have double strike. Uh, we talked about slivers in the last episode, too. So uh, this was at the time where slivers, uh, the abilities happened to all slivers, not just your own. Uh, that was kind of fixed later on in the set uh, or in Magic's history. So I, I'm i a little bit hesitant to say you should go into it solely because if you're against a sliver deck, obviously that's very bad. Uh, but that being said, this is a really good sliver to have. Uh, giving all of your slivers dub double strike just means this could end the game the turn this comes down. Uh, that's a huge, huge swing in your favor. And I kind of want to say to take it here. Normally I'm against it, uh, so not against it, but I'm like a little bit more cautious because it's such an all in like high risk, high reward strategy. But this is very powerful. Normally we get a sliver that's like, yeah, this is good, but not a reason to be there. This might be a reason to be there, so I'm going to pull it aside for now. I think it's definitely the best card we've got. Uh, Smallpox is a sorcery for two black. Uh, each player loses one life, discards a card, sacrifices a creature, and then sacrifices a land. Uh, this is a really strong card in the Smallpox deck, uh, which is very discard-focused, very much like, let's just get all the cards out of the opponent's hand, resource denial like crazy. This is definitely the flagship card for that deck. And limited, I don't find it to be quite as good. Uh, certainly a well-timed smallpox can be amazing. Uh, you get them with one card in their hand, only a few lands out, maybe one creature on the battlefield. Man, this is like crazy good. But generally, that's not going to be the case. A lot of times you'll find yourself and they'll have, you know, five cards in hand, especially with only two mana to play this. Like you might be playing it early. Five cards in hand, they're just going to choose like a land or something they don't need. Uh, and so they get to choose all of this, they sacrifice the land, they sacrifice the creature, they discard the card, they're going to be able to play around it a little bit better. So I don't think this is as good in limited, I think it's a great constructed card, but definitely not the pick here. Uh, Basalt Gargoyle uh, is a 3-2 for 2 and a red, it has flying. Uh, it does feature the echo mechanic for 2 and a red, so at the beginning of your upkeep, if this came under your control since the beginning of your last upkeep, sacrifice it unless you pay the echo cost. Uh, so essentially you have to pay for this twice. Uh, echo was a really like constricting mechanic in terms of mana. Uh, this does have kind of a weird like backwards fire breathing where it just gets a bigger butt. Uh, pay one red, it gets plus zero plus one until the end of the turn. Obviously you can do that as many times as you'd like. Uh, the upside to a card like this is it's a three mana three two with flying. It's evasive. It is a threat. Uh, Obviously, that like big butt mechanic just means it's going to hopefully live forever. Uh, but that echo is really, really key. You got to not have a good follow up play to want to pay that echo. And that's kind of tough. You want to be able to keep continuously play your spells and echo makes that difficult. I'm honestly still in for the fury sliver. I think it's going to be the most fun. So that's definitely the pick so far. We'll see what our rare is. It is Magus of the Candle Abra. So uh, obviously a hark back to the Candle Abra card, which is tap x uh untap or tap the candelabra and then untap target lands or something like that i don't think you have to tap it it was it was some crazy broken card but this is a one two for one green tap x tap it untap x target lands 
this is one of those things where you can't really abuse it as much uh, in this format. This is one of those effects where you really want to be able to abuse it. I don't think limited is the place for it. On the face of it, a 1-2 for 1 green, kind of fine no matter what, but I don't think this is the pick here. I think Fury Sliver is much stronger. We do, of course, have our time-shifted card. Uh, Stormscape Familiar is a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a blue. It has flying. White, uh, white spells and black spells you play cost one less to play. Uh, not a super exciting card, if I'm honest. It's a 1-1 one, one flyer for 2, which is like kind of fine. Uh, and if you do get that spell reduction, that's cool. But a lot of times you don't find yourself, to my knowledge, in like a three color deck in this format. Uh, it's mostly two color decks. So I don't think this is the pick here. I got to be honest, I think it's Fury Sliver. Normally I would not go for the Slivers and there's absolutely nothing to wheel in this pack that's like for the Sliver deck other than Fury Sliver. So I don't know. I'm going to go for it. That's definitely going to be my pick. Feel free. Please let me know in the comment section how either good or bad that pick is. Uh, I'm very interested to know. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this though. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. Thank you so much for watching guys. We'll see you in the next Let's Open video.